You are now listening to the homily of Father Francis Lynch, parish priest of St. Mary's Church in Chislehurst, UK. This service is provided by the Lexi Divina team, part of the LOV Verbum Dei ministry, who invites you all to share this reflection and their love for the Word of God. The Gospel is the good news of salvation for mankind. That salvation is only through Jesus Christ, as Peter said, Lord, to whom shall we go? You alone have the words of eternal life. Good morning or good afternoon. I'd like to greet everyone who is listening to the recording um, and in particular uh, to the members of the LOV um, who are hoping to read and pray and to live the gospel. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Today we're looking at the gospel for the, um, for the 19th of September, 25th Sunday of Ordinary Time from St. Mark 9, 30 to 37. Uh, and this, it covers a great number of, so I'm just going to take one or two of those verses. And this is it. <clears throat> he said, he called the twelve to him and said, if anyone wants to be first, he must make himself last, last of all and servant of all. Then he took a little child, set him in front of them and put his arms around him and said to them, anyone who welcomes one of these little children in my name welcomes me. And anyone who welcomes me welcomes not me, but the one who sent me. So I'd just like to think about some, some of the implications of these words. First, the, the first bit, he says, anyone who wants to be first must make himself last of all and servant of all. Now to many people, this is not obvious at all. Um, Plato in the Republic, as you probably remember, first book, but the, the bit that everyone reads, um, he's talking with a, with a sophist who is making the point that the whole point of being a, a, a leader is that you can take advantage of your position and you can have whatever you want. And to many people, that is really obvious. The whole point of getting positions of power, wealth, or any other um, good things in this world is that so that you can enjoy them. That's what we're here for. That's what we're all striving to do. But to many people, the words of our Lord are the obvious words, where our Lord is saying, no, if, uh, if you're first amongst people, then you have to make yourself last. And by last, he clarifies it and says, you have to make yourself the servant of all. And this is really not uncommon. In fact, it's probably the more common view. Most people um, who find themselves in the running for positions of power, no matter what they might be, if they find themselves in that running, uh, most people, I think, um, go for the view that you make yourself the servant of all. You um, read some of the biographies of prime ministers, for instance, and you find that many of them, and presidents of America, many of them, um, they, they get up at like four o'clock in the morning, they don't go to bed till 12 o'clock at night. Now it needs a certain sort of person, you need a certain sort of um, physique and makeup to be able to do that. But the truth is that many people who find themselves or aspire to and achieve positions of great power and authority, actually do use them in that way. They spend their whole life not in glorifying themselves or making themselves comfortable or easy, not in eating and drinking and making merry, but instead in giving their whole being, their whole thought, even their personal life to the people that, as they would put it themselves, to the people that they serve. It's a commonplace. Uh, that people say at the end of their parliamentary career or a career in any government, they say things like, it's been an honour, a privilege to serve my people. And both those words, honour or privilege on the one hand, and serve, do take, need to be taken seriously. And in the church, it is drummed in to anyone who is um, going to have any position of authority, a bishop and the Pope. Indeed, the Pope calls himself, um, one of his titles is Servus Servorum Dei, the servant of the servants of God. All Christians are servants of God, 
and they they want to just stand and serve um but the pope is there to make their service um more acceptable more easy to make them find joy in it and to make them find an encouragement so the pope truly is the servant of the servants of god and in a lesser way so is every priest especially every parish priest every bishop he is there worrying about and serving his people so that's the first point i'd like to make the second point is this um going on then he took a little child set him in front of them put his arms around him and said to them anyone who comes anyone who welcomes one of these little children in my name welcomes me incidentally this child by by tradition we know the name of this child his name was ignatius and he became the bishop of antioch and his he was arrested and put on trial and he was going to be put on trial in rome so they took him from antioch which is in the north part of syria or possibly the south part of turkey depending on which you which you adhere to um he was taken by boat and the boat um followed the coast and landed in a number of places and in each of these places he wrote a letter to the local bishop and these letters still exist and you can easily get them published in penguin and he became saint ignatius of antioch one of the great fathers of the church whether it's true that he actually was the boy whom our lord took aside or whether um our lord took aside children from time to time and said become like one of these put a child in front of them um when he was doing his sermons when he was preaching his sermons maybe it wasn't just the once maybe it was several times and maybe he was just one of these um but that was a tradition anyway and the the thing which he is saying is i don't welcome one of these children in my name welcomes me now the word child it does mean a small person not in the sense of being a dwarf but in the sense of being young um a child is one who hasn't reached the age of maturity they're called also an infant an infant and in law an infant means someone who hasn't reached the age of maturity 18 in our law 21 it used to be in some countries it's slightly different um and um the the infant is one who is deprived of all sorts of what other people would describe as rights but there's another use of the word child in particular boy um which is it means a servant it means a slave it means someone whom you order around um so for instance when the when the centurion is talking about his servant he uses the word child or boy and typically people do this all the time um i remember when i was in india and i was um i was asking about something and they would say oh the boy will do it for you and the boy didn't turn out to be a 12 year old who was smiling and running around um in it tended to be someone in his um was also smiling and if he was up to it running around people in low positions tend to be looked down on and called child or boy um because because that's a word that just indicates low class um unimportant job and our lord is saying and i think our lord includes um all those means the word child when he says anyone who welcomes one of these children in my name welcomes me so we should go out of our way or well, at least this is one way of looking at it not the only way we should maybe go out of our way to look for the poor and the needy those who are oppressed those who are despised those who um are never going to make it in the ways of the world but nevertheless they are the children of god and we should welcome them in the name of christ so i think i'll leave it there and we'll finish in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And I'll give you the blessing. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God. The Lecture Divina team hopes that this homily has helped you to deeply welcome the Word of God 
and gave you the strength to put the word into practice where you are. You can send us your prayer intentions by emailing them to us using the following email address lov underscore verbumdai v-e-r-b-u-m-d-e-i at outlook.com The Wednesday prayer gathering at 6.30 p.m. UK time and Father McGowan will pray particularly for these prayer intentions. If this homily has enlightened you or touched you in any way, please share it with your relatives, friends, community, and on your social media. Have a blessed week.